often we hear of Americans doing heroic things and getting killed in the line of duty. Glenn Doherty is one of them. He was killed in Benghazi. We never got to meet him, or worse, we never got a chance to thank him. But tonight, we have a video of Glenn Doherty. He puts a real human face on the tragedy. Now, Glenn's mother has given us permission to show you this video. You'll see in just a minute. But first, Fox News national security correspondent Jennifer Griffin joins us. Jennifer, what are we about to see? Well, this video was made by friends of Glenn Doherty. They're essentially outtakes from a, uh, a series that he was working on. It was a series, an NBC series back in 2009 called The Wanted. And essentially, he provided uh, security and surveillance abilities for the group as they went around the world they were chasing war criminals and in this case he's talking about they were in Hamburg they were chasing after uh, one of the financiers for 9-11 they eventually got him and he talks about some of the car chases it gives you a sense of his personality his he talks about his friends Adam Scott Roger they were working on this series with him um, they tell, told me that he had a great sense of humor you'll see that and um, that he also had had a sixth sense for danger and he always told them when to get out of danger. You know, in watching this uh, video, um, each time, I've watched it a number of times since last fall, it wasn't until now that we had permission to show it, uh, it, it you know, I, I have such a, it's almost a heartbreak because he seems warm, that, that smile that he has. Today, um, someone in our staff, I said, what did you think? She said, he looked awesome. You know, I thought it was a perfect word. Yeah, he did look awesome. Yeah, he was, you know, he was a former SEAL and we had this video back in November, but out of respect for the family, we didn't run it at that time but his mother Barbara gave us permission to run it because she wants people to know this is a this is an American hero this is somebody that people need to know a little more about we never get to know these people I mean it is so often I mean the three others who I don't even know who gave their lives I mean they're over there defending the consulate and annex and like I don't even know them you know and, and as time marches on they just become sort of you know you almost lose their names and they almost become one of four murder they've now four who've been killed right well, that's why I think this this video will give you a sense of Glenn. He had he was larger than life to his friends. He, um, he you know he he was this great former Navy SEAL. He ran around the world looking for war criminals. Uh, on this series, he'll talk about it. You'll see this video. What gets my juices flowing is roaming the earth and having adventures with good people. And if if it can be for a righteous cause, that just makes it taste even sweeter. The Mercedes just creeps through on the yellow light and he's going pretty fast. So I get up there, the radio is pinging, my phone is ringing, my adrenaline is flowing. I got JB in the back seat who's just like, I'm yelling at him, like throwing comms at him. JB, answer the phone, talk on the radio and watch that van. I am going through this, this red light. I got three lanes of traffic coming at me and I'm, I just go straight up Baghdad style. I just throw myself right out into traffic. Cars are stopping. I just eke out one lane, two lane, three lane, and then I'm through the red light. Thank God Hamburg has no cops in this town. I couldn't believe it. And almost no one came into that area yesterday, except for this one dude. He comes in, this guy's like six foot four Norwegian guy, and he's walking a cat on a leash. And he comes into my area, and I'm just like, I'm like, you're walking your cat, and the cat was into it. The cat's like trotting along alongside this guy. <laughs> He's this big dog. I think he walks like two or three circles around the little area, and cat trotting along next to him and takes off. I'm like, did, did, did that just happen? Did I have I been sitting in the sun too long? What what is going on? What's the principle behind the hide site? Principle behind the hide site to not get seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask a stupid question, Charlie. You can get a stupid answer, all right? I do know that Dad Adam is a double black belt because I was I was talking with Scott, you know, and I was just like, hey, tell me about Adam. I don't know anything about him, you know. I just kind of want to grab him in a headlock and give him a noogie. And Scott's like, I don't know if I'd do that if I were you, because he's he's a badass. He's a double black belt, and he might he might mess you up. And so then we kind of went back. I'm like, I think I can take him. <laughs> so 
I just don't know. But yeah, Adam never judge a book by his cover. Right? He's 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 been great. Sometimes I definitely want to help him get dressed. Not that I'm not a fashion victim, but he takes it sometimes to the next level. I remember I saw Adam. He was going to the gym, you know, and he had like the short shorts on and his sister's shirt, and he had like the '80s bandana, you know, tied on backwards, and it just it was just he had everything, but you know the sweatpants and the leg warmers pulled up. So it was uh, that, you know, and sometimes you know he wears the cami bandana under his hat on backwards, but the hat doesn't fit anymore. So sometimes Adam, yeah, sometimes I think he should maybe just stick with the suits. <laughs> Scott is a hippie. Scott is a former Marine, former Navy SEAL officer who is a total hippie. I mean, if that guy wasn't getting drug tested, he would be smoking weed in his room right now. So we've been on a couple sites and we left these targets and Scott has mentioned, did you feel the weird energy on that target? And I'm looking over my shoulder and he's going, shut up, you hippie, are you serious? And then the whole beaded necklace thing and it's, I think this is like his Northern California upbringing. I'm telling you, Scott, this is a dirty little secret and I am outing you. You are, a, you're a no kidding hippie. I'm vain. Scott's vain. We're, we're vain. Like our, our, our people are vain, but, but Roger takes vanity to the next level. I mean, I swear to God, he's got a whole suitcase for all of his man products that he drags behind him, despite the fact that he you know, wears the same clothes every day. I know he's in there grooming and quaffing himself right now as we speak. I literally, I said to Scott, I was like, I, I can't picture Roger in uniform. I just can't because here it's all hair and profile and come on, men. And I just can't see him like out in the countryside carrying a gun, kicking a door down. I mean, I can, but I can't. But there was one time I did see, I saw Roger working out, and Roger still wears the same stuff that was issued to him in the military. And I walked up to him in the gym and I was, I was, I said, Roger, just let it go, brother. The brown t-shirt, the little tiny little black silky shorts. I was like, let it go. You can buy other stuff. <laughs> oh my God. And he's like, it's all I got. This is something that no I would do on a state guide is I would do this. Wow. Really? Yeah. To what, keep yourself awake? What did you slap yourself in the back of the neck? I saw myself in the uh, face. Back and neck's supposed to work. I'd go right for the face. <laughs> I do that when I'm driving too. Sometimes I go both hands. Glenn's Benghazi assignment was supposed to be his last for the CIA. He was getting out of that line of work. He had been offered a comfortable job. He was going to be out of the line of fire. Um, but he told his employer, his future employer, that he wanted to go back and finish uh, one more job, one more job in Libya. And that was the Benghazi assignment. You know, it's just so painful to watch this because you finally, when you finally sort of get a face on someone who has heard who was, who was working for us, um, are we, do you have any information we're getting closer to getting the killers? <laughs> the killers. Uh, we've, I've spoken to numerous sources who have been on the ground in Libya who uh, say that they have had eyes on uh, targets there. Those who they think uh, who are on a list that are believed to have been involved in the attack and they have been surveilling them for the last few months and nobody will take a decision about what to do, whether to either try to um, uh, arrest, extradite, or um, to bring these uh, these folks to justice and there's a great deal of frustration in the community that is being asked to um, to look for the Benghazi killers um, that uh, they feel that they have had opportunities and missed opportunities that they haven't been able to act on. Well, um, he certainly seems like someone I would have liked to know. I admire him and I appreciate him and, uh, and the sadness for his family is overwhelming. Jennifer, thank you.